<laughs> Mike Osman joins me on Talking Bites. Prime Minister Farage, you like the sound of that, Nigel. Mm. Come on. Because he did want me to be the... Um, he, he wanted me to be the ambassador, didn't he? But, yeah. but the Tory party would never have anything oh. to do with that. Now, Mike... Southampton is a big part of who you are. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, going back centuries, there have been young lads growing up in Southampton who've joined the Royal Navy. <laughs> yes, yeah. And that's exactly what you did. Yeah, well, I was an apprentice fitter and turner, and so my dad was chuffed to bits, one of seven boys, so I was right in the middle, three younger, three older. Jim Davison introduced me in Scotland once. Good old Jim, I think he's watching. And he said, here's Mike Osman, the best looking of seven boys, which will give you an idea how ugly the others are. <laughs> so, thank you for that, Jim. Yeah, and so, but my younger brother, Alan, decided he was going to join the Royal Navy. So in our council house in Millbrook, Southampton, and there was all the lead. He bought all the brochures home. And I'd been an apprentice fitter and turner for two years at Moor Green Metal Industries and loved it. And then I saw this and I thought, that's a bit of me. I'm going to join the Royal Navy. So I went to be dad. I'm joining the Royal Navy, Dad. You're bloody not. You carry on with your bloody apprentice. No, that was me. And I had five and a half great years. And now I'm, uh, I'm a trustee of the Falklands Veterans Foundation. Yep. And I'm also involved in the British Forces Foundation as well, vice president. And very proud of it. But I, I was really lucky. I saw everywhere. I went all over the world. That was when we had fuel. You know, we were allowed to go around the world. <laughs> and had ships. And yeah, ships. Like, and, and, yeah, sort of, and we used to go, you know, <laughs> fly the flag. It's something I've noticed, Mike. There's a guy called Stephen Pound, former Labour MP. Stephen Pound, who I've just met, and Stephen right. and I, when I was on another radio station, yeah. Now, people like you and him, there is a thing, I think was a thing, called naval humour, naval yeah. banter. Mm. I can almost tell within 20 minutes of meeting someone whether yeah. they I mean, is that... You're living cheek by jowl with yeah. each other. I think that it's almost like gallows humour. That's how the forces get through the tough times, whether it be, you know, First World War, Second World War, Afghanistan conflicts, whatever it is, it is gallows, gallows humour. And it's also what Pat Pocock was talking about, the banter in a mess deck of yeah. 60 stokers. And I had just the greatest time because I could do, you know, as an impressionist, learning all of the accents from around the country was absolutely perfect. And, of course, all the officers who were very, very posh. So, yeah. so it gave me the opportunity to work on people like King Charles. Who, of course, was a naval officer. Yes, of course he was. He was my boss. Absolutely marvellous. <laughs> so that's how it all, you know, great, great grounding. And I'm very proud of my time. Were you at school doing impressions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was the naughty boy. In fact, Paul Slater, who was my wife, and now Jill and I have been together for since we were 15, and Paul Slater was her head of house, a sports, 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 sports teacher. And he said to her, what are you doing going out with Osman? I was a year older, but only by a week. Yeah, what are you doing going out with that idiot? And, uh, well, there you go. 43 years later, we're still well, together. Well, some is what work. did he know? No, what some is know? work. Yeah, yeah. So where does the move... How do you go from that to... I mean, suddenly, you know, one minute you're a naval stoker yeah. and then two or three years later you're appearing on big 1980s Generation yeah, Game. Copycats, yeah, Generation Copycats. Game, all yeah. of that with Jim, funny enough, uh, Des O'Connor show. I think it happened because I always knew, always knew at school, I always said that, you know, when you're older brother, so I was right in the middle, three older, three younger, my oldest brother, Trevor, would beat the hell out of us because he kept us in line, and rightly so, and I must have been an awful, you know, to, to deal with. But I always said, if you can make them laugh when they're punching you, they can't punch you so hard, <laughs> right? It's true. So I always knew that I wanted to do it, and uh, there's a guy called Bob Phillips, a great friend, who, who phoned London Weekend Television a hundred times and said, you've got to see this guy, Mike Osman, and, and would never get through, and eventually got through to a guy called Vic Finch, the producer of Copycats, said, you need to see Mike Osman. Why? Because he does Alfie Zane, he does Only Fools and Horses, Dirty Dare. No one was doing those voices in them days. And that's what happened. We did the audition and they signed me that day. It was incredible. F from this council held lad, Royal Navy, Apprentice Fitter and Turner, a roof tiler with my older brother's business. 
you know, I'm suddenly on Saturday Night TV, 20 million viewers, yeah. you know, uh, some yeah. of these TV programmes, X Factor, would kill for those numbers, you know. Was the money big in TV then? Money was, was uh, <laughs> nothing to do with you, not to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a reasonable question. No, it was OK, it was OK. But what it was, it was a, a spree. <laughs> it was, seems a reasonable question. <laughs> I think you're fine, I'm going to ask that. <laughs> so, so I think, and that was you, by the way. I know. I don't know if anyone realised. <laughs> so I think, yeah, it, it was good, and what it was was a springboard for everything else for everything else that I've done, you know, and, and, and where I've earned good money at different things, at Ca uh, Capital Radio for six and a half years. Yeah, you know? I'm going to come to that. Uh, I, the, I first met you about 30 years ago yeah. um, at a series of Christmas events yeah. down in Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, corporate entertainment, mm. big Christmas, well, booze-ups, I suppose. In they those, were, In yeah. those days... With Chris Smith, the Chris right. Smith booze-ups, yeah. And they were, weren't they? Yeah, they were, but they were great, great events for me. And, and you know, I met some fantastic people met your sister-in-law, Wendy, yeah. who I never realised was your sister-in-law. Yeah. And she said, she used to send me pictures of you fishing and stuff. And I think, why is Wendy saying? Then I suddenly <laughs> clicked and I went, of course, Nigel was her brother-in-law. Yeah, 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 she yeah. is a lovely brother. Yeah, the surname was a clue, but never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, no. Forgive me, Nigel. On the corporate circuit now, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm guessing that doing Donald Trump as you do it it's been the best five years of my life as an entertainer. I have worked in the best venues. I even worked at Trump Turnbury, and it was a big wedding up in Scotland, and they had these huge glass doors, Father of the Bride Speaks last, and he said, the only person we haven't uh, thanked tonight is the owner of the hotel. These huge, and I can't believe the manager let me do it, and I'm sure if Donald sees this, <laughs> that manager will be fired. They opened these huge glass doors, and there I was in all my glory with the wig and everything. And so good, so good, believe me. And they thought it was Donald Trump, you know? <laughs> Honestly, it, it's just the most fun. And it's not political in any way, it's just a funny act. And what does, he, what does he say to the court tomorrow in New York? What does he say? It's all fake news, you know, fake news. I mean, I was called a racist, Nigel. Racist, believe me, racist. Can you believe that, Nigel? I'm not a racist, I'm going to prove it. I was invited to Desmond Tutu. Desmond Tutu. <laughs> Desmond Tutu's <laughs> birthday party. Desmond Tutu. Now, I don't know. I don't know. If you know how hard it is to sing happy birthday to Desmond Tutu. <laughs> happy birthday to Tutu. What made it worse, Nigel, he was 92, two, two. So, yeah. yeah, You've had so much fun doing it. Mm. Well, who knows? He, I mean, well, I tell you what, he's going to be in the news hugely between, be. between now and the next, mm. and, and the next presidential yeah. election. That yeah. I've got no doubt. But that, radio, Capital Gold, you had a fantastic show on Capital Gold with a big audience. Yeah, we had 1.7 million listeners on yeah. Medium Wave, which is a really, for people who don't even know what Medium Wave is, but it was a really clunky signal. And Richard Park took a chance on me, saw me at a boxing dinner, put me on, and, and it was just six and a half fantastic years. It's that my life sort of goes in spells, you know. I had a brilliant time, and we toured off the back of it and sold out to theatres, and we'd always finish at the London Palladium. The last show of the tour would be the London Palladium. So very, very lucky. And now, of course, uh, another radio station. I mean, you love radio. You yeah. clearly love doing mm. radio. Uh, and I did it before this. Well, we do both here, of course. Yeah, we? yeah. You know, we, you know, we're still more casting I on, do know, yeah. on DAB. You're a GB News fan, I understand. I am. Well, I think it's the only place to get balanced news. That's what I think. And what I think about GB News is I think they have been so clever in, in the people they brought in. You know, I'm a huge fan of Jacob Brees Mogg, for instance. You know, and, and some of the presenters, just absolutely. And you, Nigel, because you know we, we talked to you about coming to join our I know. great British radio. I, know, I, know. The... I was nearly paid. He turned us down. <laughs> you heard it he first said, here. No. He I was, said, oh, thank you very much, thanks for the offer, but no. <laughs> it wasn't quite like that, but it was so, very nice. Great British radio. Mm. Um, Breakfast show, Monday to Friday, 7 till 10. All the impressions. Charlie Mullins. Charlie Mullins, the chairman. Yes, Boris just popped in to, uh, to say hello. I don't know if you've seen uh, 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 Ch uh, Nigel. Yeah, Charlie Mullins, great man. Uh, uh, the Chelsea sank Potter yes. For, yes. for poor results. Uh, Leicester, 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 Leicester. Sacked, uh, da, 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 sacked uh, their manager for poor, 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 poor results. And um, uh, Sadiq Khan, I've got him in a treble. So, fingers crossed, <laughs> Nigel. Come on. <laughs> yes. Great British radio. So, you're, you're doing a non-news 
Radio. No news is good news. Now, we absolutely, and coming into a studio that is all about news, <laughs> I've got to be really careful well, there's what different, I say. There's different markets. There's different markets yeah. out there. So we believe in uh, something different, to give people an, a lift, lift their spirits. My show, 7 till 10 on Great British Radio, Monday <laughs> to Friday, best of Saturday, 10 till midday, is all about fun. It's all about the impressions. You know, I we do this really clever thing with Tuffers coming into the studio. Yeah. Tuffers does our text. And he's great. And, and it's all layered, but it's me. So I'll be going, it's Great British Radio on a Monday morning, time for TMS, Tuffers messaging. So, oh, yeah, tell you what, here's a text from Nigel. Nigel <laughs> sent us a text. But it's all layered. So it feels like, so Nigel's interrupted. Uh, Nigel, you're Nigel. So Tuffers is interrupting me while I'm doing the text messages. And it's very, very funny, Nigel. And we play great music. So uh, we, we realise there is a place for news. Of course yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. But I think the way news is, it's 24-7. It's mm. incessant. I think there are certain news organisations that are about frightening people, about yeah, panicking, uh, yeah, whereas I think you come here, come to GB News, it's it's Well, balanced. I hope you're right. And you've extended your broadcast reach today to Southampton. We're in Hampshire. Hampshire on DAB, and we're absolutely yeah. thrilled for me to go back yeah. to my home territory. To Shame be. about the football club, isn't oh, it? Oh, well, we're doomed, we're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We're, we're, oh, but I've got to say, the Duke David Dickinson just popped in. Nigel, for your viewers, have we got a Bobby Dazzler of an auction prize right now? Two tickets to see Southampton's next home game or four quid for cash? It's up to you. <laughs> yeah, we are in serious trouble. Yeah, not good. and you love that club. I love it. Well, Matt Letizier was my best friend. We had a nightclub together. <laughs> I used to do the pre-match warm-up. You know, can you imagine that? Being asked to come and yeah. do the warm-up for the team that you've loved all your life. You know, I was there in 1976 when Bobby Stokes scored the winning goal in the FA Cup final when we were no-hopers against Man United. It was never offside. Sir Alex always said, <laughs> offside, whenever I see him, I said, well, goal is offside. It wasn't. So, you know, very lucky to do that. And to warm a crowd up with 30, 32,000 was something, something and, else. And, Mike, you've never been cancelled. Your, your, your brand of humour, impressions, fun... Yeah. I think it's, you know, you have to be so careful nowadays. You and I both know that. And the subjects you've covered tonight, beautifully and sensitively, by the way. But it is tough now mm, to be... Tough. So even when I get stuff, you know, I've got some great writers. Uh, Mickey Pugh out there, Bob Phillips, Alan Whiteman, fantastic writers. And I write myself. But when you, you know, when I see stuff and I, I'm sort of editing, I'm going, we can't do this. Know, yeah, particularly when you've got sponsors. And, yeah, you know, yeah. No, it's difficult. We, it's difficult. I'd like to thank Barrett at home. For spot. Can I say that? No, no, oh, sorry, no, sorry. you're gonna be fired. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Nigel will never be fired. <laughs> Mike, you said a moment ago you're an admirer of Jacob Rees Mogg. I am 100. Now he's actually standing about no. six, six feet behind no. you. So what I'm going to ask is that you, as Jacob Rees Mogg, please welcome Jacob Rees Mogg. Can I take, do I take the point with me? It's entirely up to you, Dubai. Jacob, Jacob Rees Mogg, my goodness me, Vox Day, Vox Star. <laughs> Lovely to see you, sir. I am a huge fan. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Rees-Mogg will now take to the stage with the great <laughs> Michael Farage. I and I, I will say home. farewell, good night, God bless, and Vox D, Vox D. Thank you very You're much. Well, you, go home. you can <laughs> certainly go home. He's the most polite man in the world. That's what I love about Jacob. <laughs>